Hey guys, my name is Becca and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to kick off a brand new sew along series and I am super excited to finally do one of these. This is going to be a block of the month program to put together a sampler quilt. We're going to call it the Sew Becca Sampler. Now this block of the month program, I just want to be very cautious up front. Just because we're dubbing it a block of the month does not mean that I'm going to upload one block per month. There may be some months where I upload multiple blocks. It's really just going to be a series where we're going to sew together some blocks. This is not a program that you have to sign up for or pay in any way. I'm not going to give you anything. I'm not going to mail anything. We're going to do this completely free right here on YouTube. In fact, let's call it a BYOF project. What does that mean? Well, bring your own fabric or friends or both. Seriously, tell your friends about this. We're going to make 12, 12 inch finished blocks that will be sewn together and at the end of our series we will have a decently sized throw quilt. Now here's the thing, I have not pre-planned every single block that I'm going to make so I can't tell you exactly how much fabric you're going to need. I won't know what block I'm going to make until I pick it. More on that in a second, but let me tell you for fabric requirements, I am going to pull some white yardage from my stash that I'm going to use as a background. And then for my pops of color, my print, I've got a small fat quarter bundle that I picked up from Ginny Buyer Studio. There are nine batiks in this bundle, and I'm going to try to work with only these nine fat quarters. Now, if I run low on pops of color or prints, I will go into my stash to get additional fat quarters, but I'm going to do my best to keep it limited to just these nine. The blocks that we're going to put together are honestly just blocks that I like the way they look of. The combination of these 12 blocks is going to be what's going to make this quilt unique. Because we're going to be sewing traditional blocks, I am sure you can find other tutorials for every single one of these blocks somewhere in the depths of the YouTube universe. So if the instructions that I'm giving you don't make sense, I will tell you the name of the block and the size we're making, and you are free to go look on YouTube for other videos constructing that block, and feel free to use it. But I hope that my instructions are clear enough that you understand exactly how to put this together. Lastly, I just want to let you know that all of the blocks that I'm going to pull I'm going to select from this book. This is a book I picked up from Barnes & Noble a few years ago, and it's been sitting on my bookshelf for a long time. It's a really nice book. You can pick this up on Amazon for about $15. You can get the Kindle version for $10, and it's got a ton of traditional blocks in here, as well as patterns to make that block in a variety of a number of sizes. Every one of the 12 blocks that we put together will be in this book. So if you want to pick this book up as an extra resource or an extra tool that you can use for this sew along, I'll put a link to the Amazon listing for this book and you can pick it up. Now, just to be clear here, because I've already had this question come through a few times, I do not have an affiliate link with Amazon as of the recording of this video, and I am not sponsored or sponsoring this book in any way. So I'm not going to get any money if you buy this book. If you want to save your 15 or $10 and just wait for the instructions for my video, please feel free to do that. All right. So are you ready to start block number one? I am. This is the block that we're putting together. Isn't that gorgeous? I love how the background fabric really makes the batiks pop. And then the contrast of those batiks really makes this star literally shine. So a couple of things for you before you get started. I'm going to show you all the footage for putting this together, but this is my first time using this book. And rather than redoing this entire star from scratch, I have very limited quantity of fabric. So we're just going to go with it. I'm going to tell you when you're sewing with the measurements I gave you, please, please make sure you are working with a scant quarter inch. You can always cut a little bit bigger and size down or sew with a scant quarter inch and size down. I sewed with, I think, a generous quarter inch. And because of that, some of these blocks came out, these specifically came out just a little on the short side. They measured at four and three eighths of an inch instead of four and a half inch. And so I had to do a little... Uh, kind of convincing the fabric to line up here and not necessarily exactly down here when I was sewing them together. But all in all, it still came out. It still looks great. 
Um, there are mistakes in this block for sure, but you know what? Finished is better than perfect. So I'm going to encourage you, don't get discouraged if your block doesn't look perfect. It's going to get better the more you practice. All right, let's dive in. The first block we're going to do is called the Star of Hope, and you can find it as pattern number 91 in the book. It looks like that. It's going to be a star block, and these are just blocks that I think are super pretty. You're going to want to make sure that you have your background fabric and then two contrasting fabrics. So I've got my white laid out in front of me, and I'm going to go into my fat quarter stash and pull two fabrics that have some decent contrast. I think I'm going to pull this dark blue up here and then this one from the bottom. So these are going to be my two contrasting fabrics and then I've got some white background. So before we start cutting our fabric, I actually need to go over to my iron and press this so that it's nice and flat. So I'm not going to use any extra starches or anything. I'm just going to use steam and a hot iron to get all of these nice and flat. Okay, so before we go any further, let me show you if you're using this book how to read it. This chart down here can be a little tricky. So if you have your book, let me just have you flip to page 103 or pattern number 91. Up here is the pattern number, down here is the page number. Pattern number 91 has a table in it and it's got a list of what all of the fabrics are. There's a column that says cut and there's a column that says need. You want to be careful that you're cutting what it says to cut, not what it says need. So the reason why I'm not cutting fabric with you is because I messed that up. I cut the numbers that were in the need column, not the numbers that were in the cut column. So because of that, I'm just going to give you your measurements and tell you what to cut. You're going to need to work with your background fabric. And again, in the this example, their background is yellow. You're going to need to cut from your background four four and a half inch squares and one five and a quarter inch square from your primary color which from this example is purple you're going to need to cut one four and a half inch square and one five and a quarter inch square and then from your secondary color which in this case is that green you're going to need to cut two four and seven eighths inch squares. So when you're all done, you should have four cuts of your color and five cuts of your background. I'll put in some footage of me cutting, even though I cut too much, right here for you.
Now that you have everything cut, we've got to do a little bit of sub cutting, and this isn't too difficult. We're going to start with our big five and a quarter inch background square, and we're going to cut it corner to corner and then corner to corner so that we have four pieces of this. I'm just going to lay my fabric down, put a ruler on it so that it's touching each corner. I'm going to slice my rotary cutter right through it, and then I'm not going to move the fabric. I'm going to move my ruler. And I'm going to put it into on the fabric so that it's going into the opposite corners. And I'm just going to run my rotary cutter right through it. So now what I have are four units that look like this. I'm going to lower the camera down so you guys can see how I'm cutting the rest of my fabric. The next one we're going to subcut is the big square for our primary color. That would be the purple on the diagram. In my case, it's going to be blue. And what we're going to do is layer ruler onto the fabric and cut corner to corner and then turn our ruler and cut the other corner to corner. It wants us to cut a nice big X right on the fabric so that we get four of those triangles. So now I've got four of the triangles for the background. And then the next subcut we're going to do, which is the last one, is the two of the secondary color. It just wants us to cut them corner to corner. So I'm going to grab my ruler just once. We're only going to cut each one of these once so that we have a bigger triangle. I'm going to cut one of them, pick those up, and then I'm going to cut another one. Okay, so now we're going to actually start sewing this together. And what we're going to do, all of these are going to be constructed in the same way, is we're going to take those four triangles from our background fabric and lay them in front of us so that the long side is at the top, and then we have our two short sides with the point facing us. Then we're going to take our triangles of our dominant color and lay them immediately next to those background prints, we want one of those short sides to be lined up with a short side on the triangle of the background so that they look something like this. Then we're going to basically just put these right side together and sew right here. Okay, so we are at my sewing machine and I still have my fabrics oriented in the way I need them to be. I've got my color on one side, my background on the other side, and I'm just going to basically pick up from the background pile and pick up from the color pile, one each. I'm going to make sure they stay in the same orientation and put them right sides together and sew on this edge. I want to be careful to remember what edge I'm sewing on because otherwise my background is going to be on the wrong side. And then also be very careful when you're sewing with this because you are actually dealing with a bias edge here and that fabric could stretch just a little bit so be very delicate when you're handling these fabrics. I'm going to chain piece all of these together but I'm going to prepare my pairs so that everything is ready to just go straight through the machine in the order I need it to go. So you can see I'm keeping them in the right orientation and I'm lining them up so that the edge that I'm going to sew on is all ready oriented and I can just pick up from here and line up that edge that I'm sewing on with my quarter inch mark on my machine.
Okay, now that I have all of these sewn together, I'm just going to take a little pair of snips. And if you chain stitch them, cut the threads in between each piece so that they're all cut apart. And I'm going to take them over here to my iron, which is right next to my machine. And I'm going to press all of these to the dark side. So I'm just going to gently finger press so that the batik goes over to the right. I'm going to lay it down so the color is on top and use my finger to gently nudge the colored fabric to go over to the right side. And then after I finger pressed each of these, I will go to my iron right over here and I am just going to lay the iron down on top of this. I am not going to move the iron in any way and that's gonna give me a nice crisp seam. So I'm just gonna pick it up, lay it on my mat, and press my iron down to it. You guys can kind of see over here a little bit. I'm going to pick up one of these, lay it on my mat, and press the iron down. I'm going to do that for the other two as well. And then one more. Now that we have these sewn together, we're going to take each of these and sew them to the other color triangle that we created so that when it's all put together, we have a square that looks like this. We're going to do this four times. So let's go back over to the sewing machine. We're going to sew down here and then we're going to press it to this print. Sewing these together are actually going to be a little bit easier because you're just going to sew the long side of both triangles, the one that you made and the one that you cut together. So I'm just going to take them all and pair them up, make a nice little stack. And now all I have to do is grab one set match up the edges, put it under my foot, and sew. All right, now that we have those assembled, I'm just going to take a minute to lay the secondary color on top and just nudge that back, press it with my fingers. I'm going to do that for each of my pairs. And now I'm going to put each of these on my ironing mat and I'm actually going to dry iron and then steam iron them. So I'm just going to press my iron down on top of that seam just to make it nice and flat, move it out of the way, and I'm going to spritz it and then 
set the iron down to get it nice and flat. I'm not going to move the iron back and forth. I'm going to pick it up and set it down. And then when that's done, I'm going to set it over here and do that for each of these four. Dry iron first. Mist. Steam press. Dry iron first. And then steam press. Last one, dry iron first. And then steam press. Here are the pieces that we just sewed and each of these should measure at four and a half inches if you have a good clean quarter inch seam allowance. Now here's the thing, if your seam allowance was a little generous and mine was for these blocks so they're not measuring at a true four and a half inches, they're measuring at four and three eighths of an inch and they're going to work okay. It just means that my seam allowance is going to grip more of this fabric and less of this, but it should be enough to still secure the quilt. Okay, so now we're going to lay this out. We're going to take our center square, which is our prominent color, and we're going to lay it here. And then we're going to take each of our background squares and put them in all four corners. So it looks like this. And right now it doesn't look like much of anything. Here's where the magic comes in. Once you have this laid out, you're going to want to put your little half square triangles that you made into place. And this is where it's going to get very tricky. So you'll want to pay attention to the diagram. You're going to want to set it up so that this square goes in this orientation. So this secondary color, the line for the secondary color touches the square in the upper left and the center. And then the next one will be angled so that the color touches the upper right white and the center. And then the secondary color touches this one and the center. And then the secondary color touches this white and the center. So each one of these blocks, the secondary color should be touching a white block. Each one of these white corners should only have one of the primary colors and one of the secondary colors touching it. And when it's done, you should see this star unit pop out at you. What we're going to do from here is sew each of these three rows, paying very careful to our orientation. So I'm going to take this and very carefully lay it so that it's right sides together there. I'm going to take this and lay it right side together here. I'm going to take this and lay it right side together there. Then I'm going to pick up top, middle, bottom and leave them just like this, top, middle, bottom. I know my seam is on my right hand side, so I'm going to handle it from the right hand side, go to my machine and, and seam each of these. And I'm going to take this with me because I know this is where I'm going to sew to. So just to go over that again, I'm going to pick this pile up and sew along the side. And then I'm going to add these on to each of these. Let me show you over at the machine. Okay, I very carefully brought this over in the same orientation that it was for me on my cutting mat. I'm going to set this pile over here, but I'm not going to change how it's laid out. It's going to stay exactly like that because I know this is the edge I want to work with. This is the stock I'm going to sew first. So what I'm going to do is line this up. I'm actually going to do something a little different because I know my square is a little bit smaller. I'm going to line it up so that the outside edges are nice and matched. Which means that inside here, my fabric, I'm going to show you where I'm going to sew. These don't match up perfectly and that's okay with me. I knew that this block was a little bit smaller than it should be, but where it is matched up is on the outside edges. 
So I'm just going to use my fingers to scratch that perfectly into position. Now, when I put this in my machine and I sew it at a quarter inch, I'm going to sew it measuring from the piece on the bottom, which is the bigger piece. So here we go. I'm going to do the same thing for the next piece, but this time the properly measured piece fits up pretty good with the piece under it. So I don't have to do too much finagling. There we go. And then the last one, we're just going to again line up the bottom edges and the top edges because everything else is going to be grabbed in the seam. That's why I'm doing it is because then I have a nice straight edge on the bottom and on the sides. It doesn't look like my block went in a little bit. I'll show you when the block is finished what I was talking about. All right, I have these chain stitched, so they're in the right order. I'm just going to open this up. And then from this stack, I'm going to grab my upper right corner and I'm going to line up the edges so that my fabric meets in the upper right hand corner here. I've lost the the piece that was too short is in the seam allowance so I should be able to match up my raw edges again then I'm going to open up this solid and I'm going to pick up this piece from my pile exactly as it is right now and I'm going to lay it on that middle square And then one more seam before I sew the rows together. We're just going to line up my background fabric with the bottom of this square and along the edge. And we're going to sew it at a quarter inch. There we go. Okay, we're going to take this to the, the ironing machine, and I'm actually going to press towards the background up at the top. I'm not going to press to the dark because this will give me less bulk in these areas where the triangles are. So the top row, I'm going to press out. The middle row, I'm going to press in towards that big blue square. And then the bottom row, I'm going to press out towards my backgrounds. But before I sew this together, I'm just going to convince those seams to lay in that orientation with my iron. I'm not going to steam press. I'm just going to dry press. I just want a little bit of reinforcement for each of those seams.
So this is what I was showing you about that seam. Do you see how this one doesn't quite have all of the green? I knew that this square was a little bit too small and I chose to compensate for that by having a very, very, very tiny portion of this block in the seam allowance. As long as there's enough that this can kind of be pushed over and it's not hanging on to that last thread, you should be okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is take all of these that are still attached. It's in the order it needs to be. And I'm just going to fold one row on top of the other. And I'm going to take a second to just nest my seams for each step, each junction of this block. So here we go. There's the first seam nested. And we're going to put this in and sew it a quarter inch all the way down. When I get to that junction, I'm going to stop and I'm going to play around with the next seam junction and just make sure that everything's lined up the way it needs to be. And I'm going to sew it a quarter inch. And if my seams are consistent, I shouldn't lose any of my triangular points. But we're not going to worry about it if it's not perfect because finished is better than perfect. And when this is all done, nobody's going to know. That's nice. Yeah, that's a little off, but that's okay. Now we're going to nest these seams. Now I'm just taking this to my iron and I'm pressing the block nice and flat. And at this point, after I've pressed the seams, you can press them open, down, up, whatever you want for this one. It doesn't really matter. But after you've pressed those seams into place, just take a minute to spritz it with some water or some starch of your choice and give it a good press. <clears throat> I find spritzing it with water or Mary Ellen's after you've sewn it all together really gets your block nice and flat. A good steam press really convinces the fabric to be where you need it to be. So here's our finished block that should measure at about 12 and a half inches when it's all done. I really love the way the contrast on this comes out and having it on that white background really helps those batiks just pop. Now, I mentioned to you when I was sewing this together, because my squares that I assembled came out just a little bit less than four and a half inches, the reason why I lined those up with the bottom of the fabric or the background squares and allowed the short seam to be on the middle of it is because now I can be sure that I've got a good distance on all those points for my quarter inch seam allowance when I sew this into my quilt top. Whew. That's it guys. There's the finished block. I hope you had fun making this block with me and I can't wait to do block number two. Why don't you join the Becca's Babes group over on Facebook? You can share a picture of your block with me and everybody else doing the sew along. A link to that Facebook group is in the description box below and 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you're notified when block number two comes out. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!